In the last video, we learned that when we did property lookups on objects, uh, if the object did not have the property that was requested, it was kind of handing off the request to the prototype object and checking if the prototype object had the property that you were looking for. So it was kind of something like this. So let's say you have an object here and uh, you're asking, hey, object dot property, right? Some property of your choice. You're asking to see if the object has that property. If the object has it, it would return it. And if it doesn't have it, what it would do is actually look up from the prototype and say, hey, prototype, do you have it? And now if the prototype has the thing that you're looking for, it would give it back as though the object itself had that property. And uh, we, ended the, we ended the video with uh, the question, why is this there? Why is it even doing something like this? The advantage of doing something like this becomes very clear when you realize that there could be multiple objects that get created from a particular function called as a constructor. And when it does, when there are multiple objects that are created from a new of a same function, they all share the same prototype. So let's say you have uh, something added to the prototype, right? So the first thing you're going to do is find out a function. Let's say you have an employee function over here, and then this is the prototype for the employee function. Now you say new employee, you get an object. This object prototype property is, uh, the underscore underscore prototype property, of course, is this object. Now if you were to say the employee dot prototype dot, and then define a method here, define a function as a property, right? Now if you access an employee, and you're looking for that property that you define in the prototype, you're gonna get it, right? Because as long as this object does not have that property, it is gonna look up and get it from the prototype. The advantage of doing this over here is that, let's say you create another object of the same employee function. Now, even this object is gonna get that property because it's defined in the prototype. Every object that gets created using the new keyword on that function is going to get that behavior. So this is a way in which you can create behaviors that apply to multiple objects, as long as they're created from the same constructor function. In order to illustrate that, I'm gonna create an employee function and a couple of objects and show you how this works. All right, I have a fresh Firefox tab over here with a blank page, and now here I'm gonna create a function. I'm gonna call this function employee. This is a constructor function I uh, have denoted the E capital to indicate that. And up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create uh, an employee object. Let's just use the name for now. So let's say this takes in a name as an argument. And here I'm just gonna say this.name equals name. So I'm just setting the name here. And this is my employee function. It's meant to be called in a constructor. And whatever name you pass in is gonna be assigned to the name property of the object that gets constructed. Fairly simple employee object with just one property. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple of employee objects. Let's say I say a var emp1 equals new employee. This is the way to create uh, an employee object because I'm calling this employee function with the constructor mode. And I'm gonna give this the name of Jim. And now emp1 is an object with the property, the name Jim. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create one more object emp2. I'm gonna set the name to Pam. And now if I were to access emp2, I have another employee object with the name of Pam. So I have two employee objects over here. Now what if I wanna create a common property across these employee objects that is gonna contain the same value, like some kind of a function property. Uh, let's say I wanna create a function called play pranks, and I want both emp1 and emp2 to have a function property called play pranks. So one way to do this is to modify the constructor object and say this dot play pranks equals and that function. So whenever you do a new employee, the employee object that gets returned is gonna contain that extra function property. But then that is not the best way to do this because now since we have two objects here, both those objects are gonna have a unique copy of the same function. So if you have 100 different employee objects, they're gonna be 100 copies, which is not good. So what I'm gonna do instead is create that function on the prototype of employee. So if you look at the employee's prototype object, let's say employee.prototype, well here you see there is an object here and uh, we can set things on this object. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create a pro function called
So this is an anonymous function which just does console.log of prank played, but I'm assigning it to a property play pranks on the employee's prototype object. Now I can call this directly from here. Play pranks. And I'm gonna get that function executed. But that's not the idea. If you wanna execute this function from the employees. Now guess what happens if I were to say emp1 dot play pranks. What's gonna happen is the JavaScript engine is gonna check if emp1 has a property called play pranks. And it does not, because right now we have emp1, which contains just one property, which is a name. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna look up the prototype, the underscore underscore proto, and guess what? The prototype has this function, so it is gonna call that instead. Now if I were to execute this, I get the console.log message. Now what happens if I were to access this in emp2? I get the same function executed, but how many copies of the function were there? There is just one because I've set it on the prototype. So the good thing about this is no matter how many objects you create out of the employee constructor, you are gonna have this play pranks ability on all those objects because the object does not have the property out of the box. You're not setting it in the constructor. So when the function is looked up on the object, it defers it to the prototype and the prototype has the property of set it here and the prototypes function is going to execute and it looks as if the object has that property even though it does not right so this is the reason why the prototype lookup is pretty handy you can define behaviors and have it apply to every employee that gets created so i hope that made sense there are a couple of things that i want to mention before we wind up the first thing is that this affects all employees that are created afterwards as well, right? So let's say I uh, create one more employee here. And now I can do emp3 dot play pranks and it is gonna work as well, all right? Because it is still pointing to the same prototype. Now the other thing that I wanna mention is that this lookup happens dynamically at runtime. So let's say I have a greet function and I want to do emp2.greet. This is not going to work because greet does not exist on emp2 or on the prototype, but I can actually add this to the prototype at runtime. So I can say employee.prototype And now I have a greet function on the prototype. And now if I were to say emp2.greet, I'm gonna get that function in each in each employee, okay? So this is kind of different from the traditional model of classes that we look at in some of the other programming languages. If you think of prototypes as kind of an equivalent for classes, this is where it differs. In a class model, you will have to define all the behaviors up front before the execution. But here in the prototype model, you don't have to do that. You can put things on the prototype at runtime, and the minute you add that extra property, every object that was created from the employee as a constructor, even the ones that were created before you added that on the prototype would still work because the prototype lookup happens at runtime.